This episode is about the fourth generation MacBook Pro. This episode was also researched, written, and edited using Apple products. Please don't hurt me. To start off, I want to point out that Apple clearly has an issue with fat people. Number one, their company name. Obviously, they chose an apple because it's anecdotally what you eat to be healthy. Number two, their word choice when it comes to giving the dimensions of their products. They say that their laptops are 15.5 millimeters thin. I am thoroughly disgusted by this worldview, Apple. Such a regressive company. Moving on. The camera on the newest model of MacBook Pro is a 7 mega... Wait, no. 0.7 megapixel camera. What the fuck? Basically, it's really shitty. And it shouldn't be, considering that the MacBook costs $2,000. You know what? We should talk about that price tag for a second. Whenever an item is described as comparatively budget-focused, it's gonna be expensive. Why not go ahead and say extremely overpriced to the point where you can buy three high quality non-Apple laptops with the same amount of money, warranty included, that you'll spend on this comparatively budget focused MacBook. The MacBook Pro is a good $500 more than its high-end competitors and over $1,000 more than many acceptable laptops. Sure, it's technically the best one out there, but do you really need the best at everything? Really, you don't buy the nicest possible car and you don't live in the nicest possible house. You probably don't have the nicest possible cell phone. Hell, you probably don't even have the nicest possible friends. You're content with what you have. Why should a laptop be any different? The MacBook Pro 4th Gen is a business laptop. Everyone agrees on that. So why, pray tell, does it not have any sort of suit decal? Or maybe a sweater with a starched white collar popping out? If this is really a business laptop, someone should talk to Apple's designers. There's a max allowance of 16 gigabytes of RAM, which limits the computer in some professional scenarios. Like, doing things. The video and audio editing tools on this generation have been described as fairly robust. That, my friends, is a review by someone who has never once opened video editing software and only used audio software in an ill-advised attempt to bring his high school band back together for a recording jam sesh. Reeling from the controversy surrounding the dongle, both the word and the piece itself, Apple went ahead and included a headphone jack on this computer. Sin for being so fucking wishy-washy. Now to make up for that, they went ahead and eliminated the USB options, lining the side of their new models with USB-C slash Thunderbolt ports. And you all know what that means. More dongles. Dongle. God, that, that just sounds like a word from an incredibly suppressed individual trying to figure out a code name for fucking. Also gone is the MagSafe charging port. Instead, the MacBook is charged with the Thunderbolt ports on any side of the base. Which means that if someone accidentally trips over your charging cord, your MacBook will end up in an early grave. No one is sure why this feature was removed, except that maybe people's computers were lasting a bit too long for Apple's taste. After all, this script was written on a mid-2012 MacBook Pro that hasn't been taken in for a checkup in all of its lifetime. The new keyboard is prone to noisiness, making it nearly impossible to take down notes on the MacBook while stealthily stalking future... I mean, trying not to annoy other library patrons. Now, the biggest change to the MacBook is the touch bar at the top of the keyboard on the 13 and 15 inch models. Instead of going ahead and making the entire keyboard a touch keyboard or creating a touch screen, they decided the best choice would be to place a bar inconveniently far away from where your hands are while typing and the touchpad itself. One big issue, the touch bar is buddies with Safari, and we all know that Google Chrome rules this world. When you use Safari on a fourth gen touch bar MacBook, it will show tab thumbnails and forward slash back buttons on the bar. Thank the lord those tab thumbnails are there because they are way too tiny to see on the screen, right next to the web page and everything. How am I supposed to know what site I'm on without the help of the touch bar? What are we, animals? Did I mention that the touch bar comes at a price? I mean, other than the actual astronomical price of the MacBook itself. It takes the place of the function keys. You know, the keys that let you adjust the brightness of your screen when you're trying not to wake your partner up in bed for some high-res porn. The keys that allow you to illuminate your keyboard. The keys that let you control the volume on your computer with ease. All of these keys, gone. And for what? A brief moment of enjoyment when you scroll through all of your impossibly tiny photographs on the bar trying to find one to post on Facebook? Is it really worth it, Apple? Really? Another interesting tidbit about the touch bar is that it also functions as Touch ID, which allows you to access the computer. Now I have to constantly be wary and looking out for people who are trying to cut off my finger to get into my computer. Now it does make it easy to switch users, but 
Who the fuck has multiple users on a MacBook Pro? What are you, a serial killer? Much like your phone's keyboard, the touch bar provides a quick type option, suggesting what you're going to type next so you can quickly add it in. The only problem? Quick type suggestions are often slower than the user's typing, meaning a user has to slow down in order to use a feature designed for saving time. Now, if you have the inability to type correctly, like me, the quick type feature would probably be pretty good for you. Sin for encouraging the uneducated to remain uneducated. You can customize the touch bar easily, meaning that the easily stressed among us will likely have mental breakdowns trying to decide if they want sound operation or Siri to take up coveted space on the bar. They've now given us the option to add a button that just takes screenshots. Now, it's never been easier to take photos of that sweet, sweet hentai right before your mom walks in the room. Users are actually able to use Force Touch on the new trackpad, encouraging yet another generation of Jedi to use their powers to fulfill their lusty desires. An issue that will no doubt plague strong-willed teens across the board is the sensitivity of the trackpad. Children who have a habit of pushing things a little too far will find it nearly impossible to move items around on the desktop or look up individual words on the dictionary with a lightly pressured tap. They only know how to push, guys. This will dramatically bring up psychoanalysis appointment frequency. And finally, the consensus is that if you use the computer at low brightness for virtually no tasks, it will last around 9 hours. Well, what if I want to watch a 10 hour live stream of Mario speedruns, huh? What am I supposed to do? Plug it in? <laughs> okay. I'm just so anxious.